Hey everyone, I was struggling a little bit this week to find a decent story to talk about. It's mostly just been the Olympics all over the news. I did tune in to see a two-hour show where Claire Balding and Gabby Logan got their hair done, but I guess that's to be expected for a show described as, quote, extended highlights. It's probably also a good Olympics joke to be made about an East European gymnastics team in the phrase, quote, checks and balances. Anyway, I guess the other news story is maybe that Carrie Johnson's going to be having another child, which maybe explains why the European Union have been so keen to get Boris around the negotiating table and discuss what they meant by the withdrawal agreement. Anyway, I guess for me the main story this week was the internet exploding about Piers Corbyn supposedly accepting a bribe not to attack AstraZeneca. For those who missed this, this was a YouTube channel that did a sting operation on Jeremy Corbyn's older brother, who spent the past 12 months protesting and even going to jail over the cause of Covid lockdowns and vaccinations. As peers go, he's probably caused more difficulty for the government than Brighton's West Pier. Anyway, this last week some YouTubers made a video of him accepting 10 grand only to attack Pfizer and Moderna, not AstraZeneca. They claim to represent AstraZeneca shareholders, which is a bit strange given that the company's famously selling the vaccine for cost price anyway. All things considered, it was a pretty strange and badly researched thing given that Piers was already doing this anyway. He's been attacking Pfizer and Moderna's RNA-based approach to COVID but never really mentioning AstraZeneca half as much. It's a bit like offering Nigel Farage to really lay it into the EU whenever he's asked about Brexit. You know, when Prince Harry recently signed a book deal to attack the royal family, we didn't call that a bribe. You know, the YouTube video itself actually ultimately involved the envelope of money being surreptitiously swapped for one containing monopoly money, presumably because 10 grand is a lot of cash, and YouTube content providers don't get as much of a payday for promoting NordVPN as they used to. It does mean, of course, that they now have an unusable monopoly set, but with no money in it, although that's probably the perfect Christmas present for Piers' left-wing younger brother, Jeremy. Or perhaps Jeremy Corbyn plays a special left-wing version of Monopoly that involves hyperinflation, in which case I guess Piers has an envelope full of it to contribute to the family set. All's well, it ends well, I guess. However, the strange part of the tale is it wasn't even the only Covid story involving a Piers this week, as the smug, self-aggrandizing Daily Mail columnist Piers Morgan put out an article claiming that the vaccine saved his life. Personally, I'm not really sure who he was appealing to. It suggests that if the vaccine didn't exist, then we'd be living in a world with no Piers Morgan. I guess it was maybe an article promoting the anti-vax movement. We'll never know unless you read it, which I'm not going to. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.